I'm gonna show you how to get more steels and blocks without getting more falls. So the first concept, this is gonna open up so much for you. You're always gonna put them on the defense when they're on offense and they're gonna be all, always have to respect what you're doing and worrying about what you're doing. So whenever he's moving the ball, all we're gonna do here is shadow or mirror the ball, whichever term you wanna go with works, but I'm always trying to keep my hand there. Now the thing to notice though is when I'm doing this, I wanna make sure I'm also moving my feet, but I don't wanna overcommit just to the ball because if he's dribbling and he gets that arm out for like an Iverson cross and I'm overcommitting to just the ball, now it puts his legs in a better position to go ahead and get past me here. Also, when he's just jabbing in triple threat, if I overcommit my feet here, I'm opening up this angle for him to beat me. So what I need to do is kind of keep an idea of my midline between his midline, no matter where he is. So if he steps out, I'm trying to keep my midline between his midline and the hoop, so we're all making a straight line. Hoop, me, him. And then within that, I'm trying to mirror the mall. And I also want to be in a position now where I can actually start poking at it. We'll talk about it, the techniques for that to make sure you don't get called for a fall in a bit. If I can always be here, that's an opportunity to hit it. Here, I can hear, right? I'm always shadowing it, so I always have the ability to poke at it. So when he's dribbling, same thing, dribble across, I'm, I'm shadowing. And I might pick one hand to do that with, but I also might do that with both hands for each side. Getting comfortable with both is good. This is best for kind of staying squared to him. If I do the same hand, you can kind of see how I have to turn here. Now it kind of opens my back up for him to get behind and he can use this arm to come past and then seal me with that arm. And this also comes into play when he tries to go for a shot. If I'm mirroring, I can have a chance to block that shot. But on top of that, if I don't block it, he has to think about it. He has to try to shoot over that hand, changing the trajectory of his shot that maybe he's not comfortable with. And if not, even if he gets that ball way over my hand, at least I'm in his face. Now I'm kind of impeding his vision. The other thing to be effective with actually getting steals and blocks is I usually want to be arm's distance or closer to his belly button because now that puts me in a position where if the ball's anywhere in front of him, I can easily get after it. And then as far as going for those steals, this can work. However, it's more obvious and it's a better chance I can hit him on the arm. There's a better chance if I'm doing that too, he'll purposely swing his arms under me. Now he gets that follow call. Not a good look. James Harden would take advantage of that all day long. That's kind of like his thing that he used to do before they changed the rules. Anyways, point being, I want to think about more so trying to come up under. A lot of times refs will even let you get away with maybe a slight hit on the arm because they're not able to see it as clearly. And for whatever reason, they just prefer this hit up. The other thing that does if he's in triple threat, if I get a good pop, I can pop it up, freeing up the ability to steal it more. Also when we're talking steals, that same motion, that hand being here, palm facing that way or up, allows me to push it up and that way. So now I can take advantage of that. So as he's coming past me, boom, he's going that way, I'm coming here. One other thing you'll see some players do is if they're leading with this foot, the right foot, they'll kind of do more so they're shadowing of the basketball with that hand. And if he gets over here, I've seen guys like Kawhi, he'll be like waiting on it here and he'll push it backhand like that. Same concept though, the palm's facing that way to push it that way so you can get out into space. But if my palm is facing down and he's dribbling, I'm basically just letting us take turns dribble. He takes a bounce, I take a bounce, right? I'm not really getting it away from him as much. That's why getting those palms facing a little more horizontal or up really helps. If you wanna prevent this happening on offense, make sure you grab the free workout, pinned to the comments.